Remember, a sequence is just a list of numbers. Let's have a look at this list of numbers. We can see that to go from one term to the next, we must add 4. Because we add the same number to each term to get the next term, this is called an arithmetic sequence. And 4 is called the common difference. And it is depicted by the letter D. So this is an arithmetic sequence for which the common difference D equals 4. Now we'll consider this list of numbers. To get from 15 to 30, we must add 15. To get from 30 to 60, we must add 30. To get from 60 to 120, we must add 60. And to get from 120 to 240, we must add 120. We see there is no common difference. So this is clearly not an arithmetic sequence. But how are these terms related? What do we need to do to one term to get to the next one? Notice when we multiply 15 by 2, we get the next term 30. And when we multiply 30 by 2, we get the next term 60. Similarly, 60 times 2 is equal to 120. And 120 times 2 is equal to the next term 240. So we multiply each term by 2 to get the next term. When we multiply each term by the same number to get the next term, we call this a geometric sequence. If we take the ratio of each term to the one preceding, we get 2 for each ratio. In a geometric sequence, the ratio of each term to the preceding one is called the common ratio. And in this particular sequence, the common ratio is 2. The common ratio is depicted by the letter R. So in this sequence, R equals 2. Here's another sequence. You can see that to get from one term to the next term, we must multiply by 3. To check, we'll take the ratio of each term to the one preceding it. 9 over 3, 27 over 9, 81 over 27, etc. And each of these ratios is equal to 3. So we can state that this is a geometric sequence. And the common ratio is 3. So R equals 3. So in summary, in an arithmetic sequence, we must add the common difference D to each term in order to get the next term. For example, adding 6 to each term in this sequence gives us the next term, so this is an arithmetic sequence in which D is equal to 6. In a geometric sequence, we must multiply each term by the common ratio R to get the next term. For example, in this sequence, multiplying each term by 4 gives the next term. So this is a geometric sequence in which the common ratio r is equal to 4. Given a particular sequence, we need to be able to identify it either as an arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence. There are other kinds of sequences, but here we'll concentrate on these two. The easiest way to do this is to look at the first three terms. If term a3 minus a2 is the same as term a2 minus a1, then it's an arithmetic sequence. But if the ratio of term a3 to a2 is the same as the ratio of term a2 to a1, then it's a geometric sequence. Let's do a couple of examples. We're given this sequence, and we need to determine whether it's an arithmetic or a geometric sequence. We can use the first three terms, a1, a2, and a3. First of all, we check to see if this is an arithmetic sequence. We start by subtracting term 2 from term 3. Term 3 is 16, and term 2 is 32. 16 minus 32 is negative 16. Now we'll take term 2 minus term 1, which is 32 minus 64. 32 minus 64 is equal to negative 32. Negative 16 and negative 32 are not equal. So this is not an arithmetic sequence. Next, we'll compare ratios to see if it's a geometric sequence. We'll start with the ratio of term 3 to term 2, which is 16 over 32, or 1 half. Now we'll calculate the ratio of term 2 to term 1, which is 32 over 64. 
and this is also equal to one half. The ratio of term three to term two is equal to the ratio of term two to term one. So this is a geometric sequence. The common ratio is one half, so we can say that r equals one half. We can verify this with the rest of the terms. We see that to get from each term to the next, we must multiply by one half. So again, this is a geometric sequence and the common ratio r is equal to one half. Let's do another example. We're given this sequence, and we're asked if it's a geometric sequence. And if so, what is the common ratio r? We start by finding the ratio of term three to term two, which is 12 divided by negative six, or negative two. Now we'll take the ratio of term two to term one, which is negative six divided by three which is also equal to negative two. Therefore, the ratio of term three to term two is equal to the ratio of term two to term one. So this is a geometric sequence. And the common ratio r is equal to negative two. We see that to get from each term to the next, we need to multiply by negative two. So again, this is a geometric sequence. And the common ratio r is equal to negative two. Notice that when r has a negative value, the terms alternate between positive and negative values. At this point, it would be good to get more practice in identifying sequences, and if they're arithmetic, finding the common difference d, and if they're geometric, finding the common ratio r.